the CCA Polaris. Let's talk about it. Now, I just got back from Can Jam. I got to listen to a lot of expensive things, which is a lot of fun. But expensive doesn't always mean good. And this is an interesting IEM, especially in today's market. CCA is kind of known as being KZ's sub-brand, done for doing more flat and neutral IEMs that are a little bit more appealing to more of the Western audiophile market. Though, so if you're watching, you know, YouTube you, and you really want a KZ, some of these KZ sets, especially in the CCA brand, aren't necessarily too bad. And what makes this set interesting, which uh, obviously I bought my own self uh, for $15 with this beautiful $20 cable for a total of $35, is that it fits the new meta well, and it doesn't sound that bad, all things considering. So let's get into this review and talk about it a bit, and then we'll go from there. CCA Polaris. It's polarizing, just like the name Polaris, one of my favorite X-Men. Something to note, this review and this IEM and this branded company are a little bit polarizing for, so, for some. So if you are concerned about some issues with drivers and faulty issues, I would be weary of buying from KZ. If you're not, they represent excellent value in the market. Now this IEM can be had for $15, which is a pretty reasonable fee. If we, you know, look at it here, nothing too exciting. And this has been out for about a year. If we look at this cable, this is the one that I have. I also have the orange one, but for some reason, I really like this blue one, this blue and white one. It is 20 bucks. It probably will go on sale. But as far as cables go, I do like this one a great deal. The shell is slight, but I like it. It's semi-translucent and you can see the drivers. The It has a nice mesh on the end that's able to fit ear tips well. And it does well and has no problems with ear tips staying on, which I can't say with uh, many of my more expensive sets that I have. The shell itself is nice. You see the filter right here and it is a QDC style connector, which can be good for some people, can be bad. It's faceplate, I kind of like it, but it is ex unexciting. But for $15, you know, it's not bad. If you look at this, you can kind of see the driver in here. And there are dip switch settings. I left it in up, 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 and hardly touched it because I hate graphing 16 different IEMs on both sides. And that's kind of the worst part of the hobby for me. As we look at the packaging, the packaging is super, you know, it's KZ. It's a normal KZ. I didn't even open the cable, but we'll kind of look at it real quick and, uh, you know, go from there. Again, the packaging is not exciting. It's a $15 IEM, so there you go. Now, the cable. This is the accessory cable that I bought that's worth more than the IEM. It's a $20 cable, but... For me, I, I love this cable, and it's one of my favorite KZ cables, and I sold it with my Hydro not long ago. So I decided to rebuy it back and get the CCA Polaris with it. It's a plush, awesome feeling cable on, your, on hands. It has nice metallic connectors that just kind of shimmer, and they look premium. It just feels well built with good attention to detail, and it's not bad. So... How does this sound? Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that this is the best IEM out there, but I think if I was going to recommend a budget set IEM for someone who wants to try the JM1, I think this would have to be it. It has a dynamic driver and it does have a lot of problems, especially on certain tracks and in that upper air region. It doesn't have the most pristine quality to it but it has a lot of good things going on with it. The bass and lower mids are exceptional on this IM and they fit that JM1 really well. Let's talk some graphs and kind of go from there. 
Okay, graph time. You'll notice this is the Polaris and up, up, up position. You'll notice this has really flat mids and just kind of well extends straight across. It has a nice 3K peak, a nice um, like 5 to 6K dip, and it does a lot of things well. Now, there are issues in this air where this air region is just feels dead and muffled. And I think it has kind of has to have the right situation for it to sound good on um, music. And on some things, it is going to sound extremely poor. But when it hits, it's going to be awesome and have an excellent value. Now, I recently got back from Can Jam and got into talk with a lot of guys. And the JM1 is an interesting thing. Not only is it kind of this peaky 3K right here, but it's also these flat mids from this region, this mid base to kind of lower mid range region right here. I kind of wanted to show you a few other IEMs of kind of how they fit together and talk about them in this market and we'll kind of go from there. The first one I wanted to talk about is the KD EDC Pro. Now, I, the Pro, I mean, it was kind of hyped to the moon. It does have a nice rich bass if you're really going for that, but it does sound muffled and kind of worse inside. I feel like the, the I feel like the Polaris is a little bit better not a ton but it, it feels a bit cleaner and i do like the ability to have the the fancy cable on the polaris which it doesn't quite fit on the kz edc pro which you know it's kind of unfortunate most of the kz iems are able to fit the same cable this one's a slightly different cable so it's a uh, you know kind of unfortunate there um if we look at something like the trio now the trio is an interesting set but you'll notice this region right here and that's kind of this dip which is really popular to kind of have your base kind of start around that 2k and rise up whereas this right here kind of starts around 3k and goes up what this blue line the trio kind of reminds me of is the og uh ble blessing two dusk and it's kind of like a budget version of that it does sound good and it is super fun but it, you know, it's obviously not as good, but it is a solid set, all things considering. And it, it's, it's something to consider if you, if you want to try a set that's good. But it's not, again, you can tell this is the region we're talking about here, that that's kind of where that base tuck region or that lack of JM oneness is really apparent in this, these two IEMs. Um, if we look at some other ones, you know, you look at the Rhapsody. The Rhapsody is just a fun set. You'll notice it even has more uh, scooped mids. It has a little bit more treble and presence region and a little bit more of that 5 to 6K. I mean, the Rhapsody does sound good. It is a fun set. But, I mean, it's also like three times the price of the Polaris. But, you know, for me, I, I don't know. I kind of like the Polaris, all things considering. Let's look at a few other ones. Like I like the Hydro from CCA, but it also it's like a hundred and twenty dollar set. It's almost you know eight or ten times the cost depending on sales or whatever. But you'll notice the Hydro kind of has this kind of a huge amount of this lower mid range base region. It dips a little bit lower in this lower mid range. So if we normalize this at actually five hundred, you can see how much basis here is in that hydro, how much more presence region it is. Now I, I like the hydro. I think they do a good job and extends and has deck technical details that are a lot better than Polaris. But if you're talking about what the JM1 is and you want a clean, natural sounding set the Polaris delivers if that's again what you're looking for now a lot of people talk about the Hexa now uh, you know I like the Hexa and I think the Hexa has a lot better air and details and sparkle but there's a few minor things on the graph that even the Polaris looks a tiny bit better on like the Polaris has a little bit less of this 5 to 6k region it has a little bit better base and I feel like it has that dynamic impact whereas the Hexa doesn't Again, I am not saying that the Polaris is better. I'm just saying that it does some elements of the Hexa better. And I think if you're a base head, you might actually like the Polaris better. But if you're more of a critical listener, you're probably going to like the, the Truth Air Hexa as an all-arounder. And I feel like the technicalities and the detail and the sparkle is way better in the Hexa, despite it being pretty darn neutral and kind of boring. Um, as we go up the chain, now I think the best, you know, JM1 style IEM, bang for bang, 
is the Kiwi Ears KE4. I think this is one of those sets that really competes. Uh, one of the guys who was my first you know, followers on YouTube just bought this set and was telling me about it and tell, told me how much he likes it. I love it when I hear that thing, but the KE4, I don't know, man. The upper air and detail are fantastic. It has solid base. It's not without its perfections, but I think for $200, that's kind of the one to beat and that's kind of where I would go way more so than the Hexa way way more so than the polaris if that's kind of what you're looking for uh the last one i kind of wanted to show you is another one that's a little bit more expensive but is fantastic that kind of has that jam one presence is the theodio hype 4 i think this is a fantastic set i mean you know it's it's uh it's 40 times the cost practically but the, the Fieru Hype 4 is a fantastic set if you have the dash for it. And that's that's kind of like a little bit more expensive set. There are other sets out there like the Mega 5 EST um, and other, other expensive sets that kind of do this style tuning well, like the Hype 10. But the cool thing about the CCEA Polaris is that it kind of gets you a flavor of this tuning at a cheaper cost if you can't quite afford that expensive set and that's something i wanted to do for my reviewers and channel okay let's rank this guy up i mean i don't think this is a fantastic set i probably wouldn't listen to it myself but i enjoyed it with my time listening i think it's a solid set for gaming i think you can for a little bit more you can buy a really pretty cable and have a really fun fantastic set and I think, you know, it has really good bass and really good upper mids. You know, it's tuned really, really well. And I gave it pretty good ratings for that. Now, its highs do have some faults. There are some weirdities. There are some other IEMs that I would wreck because of that. But as far as like technical prowess goes, I mean, it does a lot of things very well. I feel like it has good note weight. Its soundstage is reasonable. Its resolution is quite poor. But I think, you know, this this is kind of for those guys that love to collect budget sets. Like if you're a guy and you're just like, man, I want a good set. I, I've heard about this JM1 thing. I've heard about this fancy tuning that everybody's talking about. And I want to give it a go. I think this could be a, could be a winner. You know, for $15, you get a pretty good IEM with a terrible cable. Uh, but if you spend the extra $20, you get a pretty decent IM with a really awesome cable. I think for that price, it's hard for me to feel pressed to think of anything that would be as good in this budget space. Again, it is not perfect and I could see people enjoying other IMs more than this, but I also think, uh, you know, it's important to take a look at some of these budget sets sometimes. With this new meta tuning, I think there's some gonna be some sets kind of like the Mega 5 EST that kind of have gone under the radar. And I think this is kind of one of those sets, but in this budget space. And I think that's kind of something to consider. And I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you guys later. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Go watch another IEM video. It's done. That's the entire video. What more do you want?